Welcome back to Supply Chain Management. In this session of adaptive forecasting, we are going to talk about the last model in this module, which is Winter's model. Winter's model is similar to the Halt's model, uh, which was trend-corrected exponential smoothing. But now we're going to take trend and seasonality. So because we're taking trend and seasonality, we would have to repeat what we did for the static model, which is de-seasonalize the data, then take the regression, um, then find the seasonal index. But all of this is for the first year of the model. And then we will complete the adaptive part. So let's go ahead and take a look at it very quickly before we move on to Excel. So we talked about how the adaptive model or the Winters model is appropriate when the demand has trend level, level trend and seasonality. So the step one is we are going to use the static forecasting method to get the level and trend for the time period zero and then using seasonal index for the seasonality. Now remember the static model should be optimized so we should get the optimized value of the static forecasting model. So before you do this, it's better to finish up the static forecasting model and optimize it. Then use those optimized values for level trend and the seasonal index for the first year. And then we use the formulas of level trend and seasonality to keep updating those values. And we have three variables, alpha, beta, and now gamma, where gamma is the percentage of new data to update seasonality. So let's take a look at the formulas. So when we look at the trend corrected exponential smoothing, um, this is very similar to static, level plus trend multiplied by the seasonal factor. So here is the formula. We have forecasting for the current time period. You use the previous period's level plus trend multiplied times the current seasonality. So really that's important to note. And if we have more time periods than the data sets, then we have to multiply the trend by so many number of times. So level is alpha times the, the ratio between the actual and seasonality. So when you take seasonality, when you divide the actual demand by seasonality, we are removing out the seasonal factor. And here we have just the forecast without the seasonality. This is the old seasonality and that's the new level. The trend is basically again same as trend corrected exponential smoothing, beta times the difference in the level plus the old level. And seasonal, seasonal factor is we are taking the actual demand divided by your new level. If you remove the level from the demand, the only thing that's left is seasonality. This is the new seasonality and this is the old seasonality, and we're taking one minus gamma that. So we already talked about what alpha, beta, and gamma are. Here is an example from a toy problem. We are given the initial level and trend and the initial seasonal factors. We can find the forecast for the first time period. And then here is the observed demand for the first time period, and therefore we have the forecasting error. And we have alpha, beta, and gamma values given. And so we can use this to calculate the new level, the new trend, and then the new seasonality. And then we can continue calculating the values. But this is not as important to us as doing it in Excel. So let's go ahead, use this to do this in Excel. Here is the data set we're going to use. And we have alpha, beta, and gamma, and we are going to run this in Excel. So let's stop right here and start working on Excel. All right, so we are going to look at Winter's me method or trend and seasonality corrected exponential smoothing. This is going to be a long method, so I hope all of you uh, will listen to the static method first because we are going to do static method first that's about 
that took about 30 minutes i think that video then uh, we're going to look at the adaptive method because we have to take data from the static method into the adaptive method so the first step first step is to go to the end of your first year you have seasons one two three four so this is the end of the first year and as re you remember in your static method we are going to take the average of that you're going to take the average and you're going to copy this all the way down okay so this is taken care of and now we are going to create our deseasonalized demand data this is what we want we're going to create that now because this is time period is four and not three or five we have to take the average of these two to be deseasonalized demand if we had five seasons we could have easily just at at three we could have just said equal to this value but since this is deseasonalized we are going to take the average which this will give us the median here and you're going to copy this down just let's make sure no this is not what we want we want to delete this and we are right here all right so once we have finished with that the next step is to actually use the deseasonalized demand right and take a regression equation with respect to the time period now you can go to data, data analysis, regression. This is how I've been showing it. You can select this and then you can select these values. Click OK. Take the intercept and slope and put it up here. Or here is a, a shorter way to do it. I'm just going to select this. I am going to select this. The deseasonalized demand and time period. And I'm going to create... A scatter plot open up create a trend line say that I want linear trend and say display equation on chart uh, and this should give us the values we need um, so we have intercept our level and trend the level is seven four two one Point, actually it's 49 but 0.5 and trend is 141.15 okay 141.15 so and now we can go ahead and delete this so we've got the level and trend so we can start doing level plus trend here and this is going to be level f4 plus their time period because you got to multiply the trend by the number of times it comes and then F4 for the trend. So you can copy this down all the way, paste formulas. So we got level plus trend, you know, and, and remember I've showed you all this um, in your, um, in your um, static method. So this is not new to you all right you've seen this before now we're going to calculate your seasonal factor right so you're going to calculate your seasonal factor and seasonal factor is nothing but your demand divided by this level plus trend so this is your percentage value you can kind of copy this down and you get your seasonal factor and remember what we said was that your seasonal factor you we've got to find the average of these values right we've got to find the average so your seasonal index we have seasons one two three four and your seasonal index is going to be we're going to use average if average if and the range is we are selecting this range f4 your criteria is it's whether it's this season and if it's that season we are going to average these values right here f4 so this we're just going to let's move this up here right here okay and so now we can copy this down this will give the average index for each season this average if we got the average index for each season so now we can calculate your forecast your forecast is nothing but your actual level plus trend multiplied by VLOOKUP 
and we're going to look up the value it's essentially this is what we're going to look up the season from this table array we're going to use f4 your column index number if you want the second one to come through and we're going to say range lookup is false right and then we can copy this all the way down so this gives you your forecast now you've got your forecast and the next step is to calculate your um all your error terms so oh, i'm not going to sit and calculate it i've already shown you how to do it i'm going to copy and paste it from another file uh, and just paste it directly here make sure then it's correct so that's correct that is correct and so we have calculated the error terms i've just copied and pasted it right there all right so let's get the average here uh, because we need to optimize this right so the static method has to be optimized so this is not exactly optimized so i'm going to copy it create a copy this is your static opt the first steps in any optimization is that these values have to be values and not formulas so these are all values so let's go to data analytics solver objective we are going to go ahead and minimize your mean absolute value and your variables are here are your variables and we know that this average here should be equal to a hundred percent and so let's go ahead and run that and we get the solution and sometimes it takes a little bit long so we've got the solution the next step is to do this use this for our um our um winters method so let's go ahead let's go ahead and copy this part and paste it we'll start working on the winters model and we have we are going to create time period zero and we need level trend and seasonality and then you have your forecast so your level right now this is going to be your level um, and then you are going to have this as your seasonal trend and your seasonal factor for the first four seasons is going to be copied directly from your static method all right now you're going to look at the formulas and here's your forecast your forecast is going to be level plus trend multiplied by the current seasonality right and now here you've got to use the formula so the here the formula is going to be alpha so you need alpha now you need alpha and uh, um, so let's go ahead and delete all of this uh, we're going to have alpha beta and gamma and right now let's assume they are all 10 percent uh, let's go ahead this is 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent there you go all of them are 10 percent and so we start with the formulas so this is alpha multiplied by your demand right divided by your seasonality so this is the dc's new deseasonalized level value plus one minus alpha multiplied by the old which is nothing but this right and let's make sure we got that right 
uh, here is a multiplication sign which was missing there we go so that's your old level now your trend is going to be beta multiplied by and it's going to be the new level minus your old level plus one minus beta and don't forget to put the dollar sign multiplied by your old trend so that takes care of this so let's go ahead and copy this down up to this point everything is working really well until this point and let's make sure we get it right next time too so now we've got to update your seasonality seasonality is gamma right multiplied by and here we have your old demand divided by your old level so when we take the level out of the demand only thing that remains is the seasonality and that's your new seasonality plus one minus gamma right f4 multiplied by your old seasonality so we are updating 90 10 9, taking 90 percent of the old seasonality and 10 percent of the new seasonality so with this we've got we have taken care of this so we can go ahead and copy this we can copy these two and from now onwards you should get your forecast right up to this point and here this is not a problem this goes comes down to this new year so this is not a problem but starting from the second time now remember trend is two time periods of it so you're using a rather old trend and so you will need to go ahead and say f4 right and here you're going to do two multiplied by your trend and multiplied by the trend your f4 of this trend and seasonality has no dollar sign so now you can copy this down All right this gives you your trend seasonality level trend and seasonality and your forecast right so let's go ahead and format this and there we go now all the error terms again like i said you need to calculate you need to calculate your confidence interval i'm going to copy and paste it i'm not going to show you how i'm going to do it here because we have done this in the very first video so that's something for you to go back and take a look at but what we are going to focus on is the optimization part so let's go ahead to the next one and we have to optimize your alpha beta and gamma so that you have minimum mean absolute deviation so here we go we are going to go ahead minimize your mad and the cells variables are only your alpha beta and gamma you're not going to go change level and trend and your alpha beta and gamma are all less than one and they are all greater than zero go ahead and run it and that should give you an optimized value for your mad it might not be a bad idea to run your alpha and beta gamma with from multiple values 10 percent 90 percent and then to see whether you get the same answer and if you do get the same answer then it's probably the right answer all right so there we go this is a static forecast where alpha beta and gamma are zero and it gives you 86.41 which is the lowest value